Hello and welcome to another episode of The Top Shelf with me, Shantanu D. I hope you're all doing well. Um, February is upon us and uh, quite looking forward to, to the spring now after a long uh, cold winter. So what do I have for you today? Today I have for you um, an Indian pen. It's called the Camlin uh, uh, Elegant or Elegante. I'm not quite sure what that E is doing there, but I might switch between Elegant and Elegante during this review. Uh, it's a fountain pen, of course, and uh, handcrafted gold-plated nib, uh, nib, pardon me, satin chrome-plated brass cap. And this pen is made uh, alongside uh, the Kokuyu Company of Japan. And it's a strange box. It's a sort of a triangular box. A bit much if you ask me. But the real banger for this pen is that it is 199 rupees only. So with that box out of the way, let's take a look at this pen. Now, this is the pen. And it's really quite a nice looking pen. And I think... Uh, I, I feel that the name is quite apt for this pen, the Elegant, Camlin Elegant. So as you can see over here, it has the name written over here. It also has the name of uh, Kokuyo and Camlin written on the clip. The finial is a slightly raised finial over here. And overall, it seems like a fairly uh, handsome pen, if you ask me. The barrel is... Um, a plastic barrel and blue colored. I believe you can get them in other colors, but I'm not quite sure about that. Don't quote me on that. Let's take a look at the inside of this. Um, it's a snap-on cap and here's the section. It's a fairly comfortable section. It's got this bulbous bit over here and then it flares down and it has um, this sort of chrome ring over here. And then we move on to the nib. Let's take a closer look. The nib is not bad. It looks quite nice. It's fairly simple. It has some scroll work. Uh, and it's, it says Camlin tipped fine. And let's take a look at the feed. The feed is uh, seems plastic to me. There's something written over there. Ah, let's see. It says uh, 16. I'm sorry if you can't make it out, but I don't know what that means. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the bottom has this shiny bit over here and this pen is fueled by either a cartridge or a converter, international standard. This converter came with the pen. It's pretty decent considering it's at 199 rupees if you ask me. And this is the, it's a bit of an annoying um, converter. It fills really easily, but it has this rattling sound uh, if you move the pen around a lot. But anyway, I'm not complaining. One thing to note is that the uh, there are some oils on this and this pen can be a little smelly, uh, but it's all right, I don't mind that. It's all part of the charm. The uh, threads are fairly uh, deep and uh, again, you can see some oils, that's why it's shiny and they're all plastic. So it's plastic and plastic, so it seems all right. What else do we have about this pen now? Let's do a quick size comparison. I have over here a Lamy Safari, uh, standard Lamy Safari and the Camlin Elegant. As you can see, it's uh, slightly longer than the Lamy Safari, but um, it's got a, I like the shape. It's a very traditional shape, but um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the size comparison. Let's take a look at them when they are uncapped. Uh, Right, the Lamy tends to be a little longer. I suspect that's also because of the long writing section of the Lamy Safari and the longer nib. It's a more um, streamlined nib as compared to this, which is a traditional uh, flared out sort of nib. Anyway, uh, that's that. I'm not going to post uh, the Lamy, but the Camlin Elegant is wonderfully balanced when you post it. As you can see, I have a reasonable size hands. They're not uh, too small, neither are they too big, but it's very, very comfortable because the weight, that is primarily the weight of this pen is in the cap, but it's not so heavy that it makes it heavy at the back. 
So writing is very, very comfortable. I've been writing with this for uh, a week or so now and uh, it's really fantastic. Plus it's, uh, you know, because it's, this pen has been around for many, many years. It's a bit uh, nostalgic for me, so I'm quite enjoying it. But as you, as you will see, this is a pretty good performer. And let's take a look at the performance. Now this uh, write, writing sample is on an endless notebook with Tomo River and the nib is fine. Although if you ask me, the nib seems a bit like a fine medium, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It writes quite well. The ink flow is excellent. Uh, the ink I'm using is something called Camlin Royal Blue, which is of the same company as you can see and uh, Royal Blue. And it is an extraordinarily good ink. It's very smelly and very metallic, but Reminds me of my school days, but anyway, uh, it comes in this plastic bottle and it's 60 ml. Quite extraordinary, right? 60 ml for 20 rupees. 20 rupees is roughly around about 30 cents. So that's quite something. And it has a nice color. It has a nice traditional royal blue and it's no nonsense. There's no bleed through. There's no shading or any fancy stuff happening. But uh, the price of this pen, of course, is 199 rupees which is about $2.68 roughly. And uh, it's a pretty good offering from a pen company that's been around for a long, long time, established in 1931. And then at some point, I think Kokuyo um, had some stake in it or took over a major stake in this company. But having said that, you know, it's a good looking pen, uh, very, very well balanced. It's comfortable for long writing sessions, uh, great price point. And uh, there's nothing really to complain. Before I go, I'm going to take a look at the um, writing sample on some cheap paper, which is your regular printer paper. I've done some scribbling beforehand. So as you can see, it's a very, very good performance. There is no feathering or anything of that sort. And the color is fairly consistent. And I think that's got to do with the ink. This ink is pretty, pretty good. Um, and you see, Camlin is, is a brand which is uh, in partnership with Kokoyo, of course, is uh, doesn't have a very expensive stationery. It offers a wide variety of things in India. So, you know, whether it's color pencils or pencils or other stationery items, compass boxes and pens and gel pens and blah, 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 so on and so forth. But that was the performance of the pen on cheap paper. Now let's take a look at uh, the performance on Midori MD. Now in Midori MD, the color changes a little bit. This is cream paper, so I suspect that has something to do with the color. And I thought I'll give you a live demonstration as well on how the pen performs. It's very, very smooth. This is the Camlin Elegante in fine. So yeah, it's fairly wet. This ink is excellent. It's very easy to wash off as well. And let's do some S's. Let's do a little bit of a sketch of a box. And writes well in both directions. Does it write in reverse? Yes, it does. Scratchy, but writes nonetheless. But who writes with a reverse uh, in a fountain pen anyway, unless it's a specialized nib. So that's pretty much it. Um, I want to thank you for taking the time out to watch this video. And I hope uh, you will see some of my other videos as well. Uh, do like and do share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.